Hi, everybody. DJ Yokely with you with a very special guest at this point. It is the Columbiana Baseball Coaches Corner, and I am joined at this time by Mr. Ryan Wolf. 9-0, the Clippers so far on the season. We don't want to date things naturally, but Ryan, when you look at this, it's a very, very special Clipper crew that you have this year. You've been at the helm now for, for how many years? Uh, this is my eighth year. And you're, you're killing it right now. 9-0, and the Clippers, there's something special about this team. Tell me what you feel the differences are of, of this team as compared to your, your prior seven, eight years. I, I would say overall depth. Uh, I mean, we've gotten contributions from sophomores. We have three starting sophomores, uh, juniors, and seniors. So we have good team, good leadership in our senior class that, you know, a couple of the players like Riley McElwain and Zachary Pleska have been playing um, – you know, starting really since they were freshmen. Um, they all went through the COVID year. They, they saw what we lost. Uh, you know, they're just big time baseball guys. So, you know, the biggest difference I think that we have when we feel, you know, the nine guys out there uh, on the field at any given day, and we're probably about 13, 14 deep is they're baseball guys. So they really care about what we're doing and uh, what it takes to get better. Uh, they're not just not kids that are, they're out there playing, um, playing baseball which is okay because we're a small school so you're definitely going to have that but you know, we're kind of lucky this year that we have a whole bunch of baseball guys and i think that we've we've talked about this before the the, the importance of foundational in sports and, and having that foundation of being baseball guys being mm -hmm. known for playing baseball and you mentioned being a small school you have to share your your athletes and your student yeah. athletes across the board and a lot of these guys are multi-sport athletes what is it about being a multi-sport athlete that you think helps them when it comes to be, being a, a better player in the game of baseball? So the one thing to me that's important, and we always push for it, is that when you compete in other sports, it may not be your best sport, but you learn different ways to, to be successful, to be a good teammate, um, to use your body in a different way and, and find the things that you're strong at and that you're, you're good at and ways to contribute. So if baseball is your, your best sport and, and you know football might be a, another sport that you, you like to play or basketball, soccer, all those sort of things, um, you may not put as much time into it, but you find ways to, to contribute and help your team. And, and, you know, that's the big thing, too, is about the team aspect. Uh, too many times anymore, uh, especially with the way travel ball is and, you know, AAU and, you know, other sports and JO and all that, we lose aspects of what, what it means to, to be, you know, like a clipper. And we've been lucky enough when these guys that play multiple sports have been Clippers uh, in many sports throughout their, their entire high school career. So they value what it means. So I think that's something that we, we really put a lot of emphasis on this year. And we got guys that are, that are definitely bought into it. It's funny because growing up as a bulldog, you, you learn to kind of be aggressive towards that, that block C uh, mm -hmm. that's on your hats, but you have really started uh, to evolutionize the way that the Clipper baseball program is. It, it used to be, it was straight up and down about pitching and pitching only pitching one games, pitching one districts and regionals and things of that nature. And you have built in that there has to be some offense mixed in because if your pitching's not there, your offense needs to step up and, and fill that gap. Talk to me about that. Right. I mean, this year we're lucky right now. I mean, we're absolutely mashing the ball, but you just said pitching, pitching and defense win championships. And we have great pitching. Um, I mean, we are five deep. We have eight guys that, that can pitch uh, at any given day, but you know, at the plate, I think our lineup one through nine um, is very, it's tough to beat. Um, you know, many of these games, some of our tougher games, it's the bottom of our order that it sparked it to roll up to the top. I and mean, we got guys that can absolutely mash up top. Um, really, our top six guys absolutely crush the ball. I mean, so far, our OPS as a team is 1.059. We have a 500 on base percentage as a team. Wow. Um, those are things that we just really emphasize about getting on base. And then once we're on base, we, we steal bases, we're aggressive on the base pads and, you know, our guys are hitting the ball hard. I mean, we have 17 doubles, seven triples and five home runs in nine games, which is, you know, really the power aspect is something that we haven't had up and down the lineup. Um, we've had always had a couple guys that could, and every team does They're three, two, three, four hitters can really, really hit it. But, you know, we can hit the ball off the fence one through six, and then our seven, eight, nine can absolutely mash it at times too. And that's got to get you excited because typically the offensive numbers rise as the temperatures go up as well. So, you know, at the end of this week, uh, as it stands right now, according to Storm Tractor 21, we're going to have 80 degree weather 
And that's got to get you excited about your offense. <laughs> well, you know, what's funny about this weekend. It's our prom. So oh. on Friday and Saturday, uh, prom's Friday after prom Saturday. So we don't get to play this weekend. Um, it does. It gets me excited. I'm a little tempered. Um, you know, hitting is streaky. So yeah. we're hot right now. We got to stay that way. And really the way to do that is have good approaches. Um, I think our guys have done a nice job with all the different types of pitching that we've seen. Um, they've really come to the plate knowing what their job is and what their mission is for that at bat. And I think that's how we can continue to get better into May. That's our motto a year win in May. Um, you know, I think last year, I think we were like two and six in May. We had a really good start and then the hitting kind of went cold. So that's something if we can continue the approaches and continue to push forward on how teams are going to attack us, um, continue to run the base as well and put ourselves in good situations to drive in runs. I think that the run production will continue to be there, even if maybe maybe the power will go up, maybe it'll even out. I mean, everything seems to even out when it comes to baseball. So um, we're just going to keep keep attacking, keep attacking. Ryan, who are some of the guys that we should look forward to, no matter what the stats say, that are, are keeping kind of uh, the boat moving forward, so to speak? The, the guys that aren't necessarily seniors necessarily, but they're guys that you're counting on inside the dugout, whether it's on the bench or in the field. So there's a couple guys that they're not necessarily the names that you see in the paper all the time. Um, one is Brady Kreidler. He's our first base when he started last year. And, you know, at the plate last year, it was a little bit of a struggle for him. I mean, he had an up and down year. This year, right now, he's got a 583 on base percentage, 412 average. Um, he's hitting the ball really, really well to all fields. He's able to sack bunt. When he gets on base, he's able to run. Um, and defensively, he's a stalwart. He saves us runs by the way he can play first base. Uh, another one is uh, Eddie Clancy, who is, he came to me, he'd always been a first baseman. He was kind of a role player for us last year. Started some games at first, uh, played some different positions, wanted to be the second baseman, knew that we graduated a three-year starter at second and Tyler Anderson. And he has really taken over that role and done a really nice job of learning all the little things. And we talked in the off season of you know, just his throwing motion, some quickness of the feet that he needs to get better as a second baseman, you know, difference from, say, first. Uh, you know, he's done a great job out there. Uh, you know, we turned a giant, a huge double play with runners on first and second against Howland um, up two to one to get out of an inning that just kind of changed the game. And he was the pivot guy on that play. Um, and then we have our sophomore catcher, Colin Kellerman. He doesn't get to hit that much um you know that's kind of some but as, as a catcher and the way he he commands a game you know our all our pitchers our older pitchers love throwing to him knowing they can throw any pitch at any time and he is going to be a stalwart behind the plate i mean howland back to that howland game they had a runner on third with two outs you know we had two strike count and we threw a ball we, we kept throwing breaking balls in the dirt because we knew our catcher would block them we weren't afraid to throw any pitch so um, those are three guys that they don't necessarily always show up in the, the stat sheet, um, but they're guys that have really contributed and they're keys to where we're at right now. I think I'm really interested about kind of one, one of the things you just said is guys that aren't necessarily always on the stat sheet. How is it and why is it so important to have guys like that that are role players that don't necessarily care about having their name up in lights, but you can count on them when the game's on the line and, and they are, no matter if they're a freshman or a senior, they're willing and able to, to commit, how much does that help you moving forward? And how much trust do you have to have as a coach in players that are underclassmen? So, you know, one thing we talked about this year is we kind of labeled the types of hitters that we have from our gorillas, which are guys that just mash. And every team's got a couple of those. Our leopards, our speed guys, every team's got a couple of their, those. But our boars, those guys that are willing to get down in the dirty work to do things to make sure that the situation is always better, whether they, you know, even hitting a getting a ground out but moving a base runner up is something that is a positive thing for the team. And I think what we have really bought into that with a lot of our guys is understanding the rule that I have um, in the batting order, in the lineup. What am I supposed to do? How can I help us? That, you know, it doesn't matter. A hit doesn't always matter. Getting on base matters. Moving guys up matters. Seeing guys successful after you matters. And, uh, you know, that's one thing I think that's a little bit different. And the young guys, I think a lot of times have trouble with that because they've grown up, they've always been kind of the guy and now they might be batting seventh or eighth or, or fighting for at bats and understanding that it isn't always about, you know, that batting average and those sort of things. It's what can you do to help the team win? And, and right now that's kind of where we're at. Everybody is, is into that, whether it's one through nine in the order, they will do whatever it takes to, to get us that victory, whether they're coming off the bench or, you know, the, 
positivity on the bench has been very good. And that, you know, when you're winning, that's that's easy to say. So, you know, we've we had a little have had a little bit of adversity. I, I know we're gonna have it. We have some tough teams coming up. We picked up Lakeview on Thursday. You know, we have Mooney and Fitch next week. So these are teams that are they're gonna press us a little bit. And we want to continue to challenge ourselves to know that again, to win in May, you gotta face adversity now uh, to help build us up and in that point. It's gonna take those guys. It's gonna take, you know, with 26 on the squad as a total, that's gonna take all 26 guys. Um, whether or not they're they're on the bench or not, uh, they all matter and they're all important to us. Now, obviously, from from your standpoint, Columbiana has a, a very very traditional program. You know, everybody understands that Columbiana baseball is always going to be around in some form or fashion. Talk to me about what you've kind of instilled into your players about representing the town across their chest. I know that there's look good, feel good, play good because you guys are looking really good this year with your new unis and, and now the, the, the Clippers on top uh, instead of the block C talk to me about the kind of the instillment of, of kind of letting them understand what it means to play for Columbiana. Well, I mean, not only like the history, just that um, we had talked about, I said, mentioned this a little bit earlier. It's just important that in this day and age that you care about like the place that you're from. Uh, with open enrollment and then with the way summer ball is and the way kind of a lot of other sports, you know, it matters to play for each other. This is the only time that you're going to ever be with this group. It's something that I kind of reiterate in all sports every year I coach that, you know, those are the things you're going to remember is this group, the people you're with. Um, you know, if we, we we're, if we're successful enough to, to get a banner up in the gym, those things that we put together, um, you know, it's something – Personally, I was with a, as a football team, our 2002 John Carroll football team made it to the national semifinals and we just got inducted in the John Carroll Hall of Fame this year, um, a couple weeks ago. And something that I kind of kicked to our team, like you're a part of something and you want to enjoy that process and enjoy being together. And it's a matter of what's, what's on that chest that, that the Clippers on the chest is ultimately what people look at and what people will remember. So enjoy it. It's not about individual accomplishments. Those who you'll get. But, you know, the team aspect, the what the memories that you make as Clippers, something you'll never forget. Well, congratulations on the induction, Coach. That's uh, really something to be proud of. Yeah, I was pretty shocked when it happened. I, I was pretty excited. I was telling all the kids, like, it was one of those indoor days, and I got, like, a, a text message, and I was, I was, I was super pumped. That's awesome. That's fantastic. That's that's phenomenal for you. You've been a lifelong sports guy uh, throughout uh, the area and, and a well-known name. And uh, obviously you've done stuff for YSN. We couldn't be happier to, to see your success. So congratulations on that. Uh, a couple more questions before we let you go. Ryan Wolf here with the Columbiana Clippers baseball team uh, for Coach's Corner. So Ryan, you talked about Fitch. You talked about some of those teams that you know you look at, you're going to have to have your A game. Mm -hmm. What does it mean for you guys to be in the headlines? Now, you Columbiana County isn't necessarily known for our style of baseball down here. And some people look down upon us uh, being from the county. But when you go up against the Fitches, you go up against the Howlands, you know, if, if you're able to, to, to level up constantly, people don't remember, was it Canton Central Catholic a couple years ago that, that you guys beat and kind of yeah. threw a monkey wrench in the entire thing? You guys are making history one game at a time. What does it mean to you to, to be one of those featured games uh, every time you go out? You're nine and zero now. When you go out and play Fitch, hopefully you're still on the on the right side of the the apple cart there. Talk to me about that and why it should be exciting for your kids and, and for fans of Columbia and Clipper baseball. So you know, I grew up playing in West Branch, so we played bigger schools. I have a big school mentality. Uh, you know, I've coached two D one schools for football. Like I don't ever want to back down from anybody, um, and I want our kids to have that mentality that it doesn't matter. You know, I think too often it's like, oh, you're Division Three. It's okay to lose. It's not. Um, you know, we go into the game knowing that we we can win, and it's been a battle. You know, my other seven years we've had we've been up and down in those challenges when we we face D two and D one schools. And um, I think the one difference this year is our kids are they want it. They've asked for it. You know, last week we played Ursuline on Tuesday. On Monday I said we have a chance to play Ursuline. Like we want them. You know, they want some of these big schools. Not only you know. Obviously, a victory is great, but just that challenge to to get better, um, to to go in there knowing that we're going to give it everything we got, and that we have to be perfect to beat these teams. Um, we got to do the, the little things right. We got to prepare right. We got to mentally set ourselves up, and it's only going to help us moving forward um, in, into the tournament and into May. So, what I'm proud of our kids is like 
the fact that they really want this. Um, you know, we, we have our league, it's what it is, but when it comes to some of these non-conference, the, they, they are asking for these big teams. That's why we're playing Lakeview on Thursday in the area. So we want, want that challenge. Um, we, it's something I think that only makes us better, but it makes them better as, as, as people, right? That if they want to challenge themselves, they're not going to back away from anything and they're going to learn from their mistakes uh, moving forward as, as young adults and continue. And I think that's better for the types of kids we want to produce in our society. Absolutely. And you're doing a, a wonderful job now. And now you're starting to be able to, I know it feels like you've been there forever, but eight years in, you're able to point to some people, uh, namely, you look at a, a Chase Franken who's playing D1 baseball, and you can say, this is what it takes to get there. Are you willing to make the sacrifices that Chase made, that his family made, and things of that nature, uh, to, to be a D1 athlete or to be an athlete that plays at the next level, whether it's D1, D2, D3, Juco, whatever, now you have an ability to, to kind of point that magic wand and say, this is what you need to do. Does that help you kind of inspire these, this next generation of Clippers? Yeah. I mean, like I said, we have some baseball guys. So, you know, Riley McWayne's going to try C uh, up in Cleveland. Zach Pluska's going to Lycoming in Williamsport, PA. Um, you know, we got some guys that want to play college baseball. And I've had a few um, in the past that have went, uh, but like Chase, was that really that first one that, that you knew from the get go that, this is what he strived for. Um, you know, we had some guys that I think could, definitely could have played, like Mitch Davidson, Keenan Green. Uh, yep. Those those kids could have, but they chose to go a, a different route um, with what they want to do after high school. But uh, you know, it's nice to kind of see that. And when you see the like somebody like Chase that's on TV, um, that's getting covered, that's that's flying south every weekend uh, in February and March. I think it really motivates our, our players. And his brother is one of our coaches, so. Um, you get to hear from them a little bit more and we, we kind of do some of the stuff that YSU's doing drill wise, Chase comes in and, and we talk to him a little bit. So uh, I think that's, all, that's only a benefit um, for where we want to go. Cause we have a lot of guys that on this squad, like I said, that are baseball guys that, that want to play college baseball. Coach, we can't thank you enough. We wish you continued success. You're always welcome here. Literally the, the carpet's always rolled out for you. So uh, keep it going. We're proud of you and uh, looking forward to the next conversation. All right. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.